So I've been looking for a place to lay down my roots recently, and it's occurred to me that I, a 20-something single man, can't afford anywhere to move. More specifically, I can't drive. Technically, not yet. So I need viable, consistent travel to and from work. So anywhere in my local city is great. Except I can't. Like, it's... I really can't afford to. So I was thinking about looking more outward. So I started looking around my county. And yes, I am going to put a little graph here to show where I am because I'm giving you the county, but I'm not giving you the city. That's just for future reference, by the way. More or less looking for cheap places near train stations, so I can get to work, but Jesus fucking Christ, look at this shit. I have to pay utilities, water, electric, Wi-Fi, phone bill, gas, if it requires it, on top of food and other expensive. Expensive? Expenses. I don't want to constantly rent. Because I, I want to have a place where I can point to a map and go, I own that bit of somewhat rectangular section of Britain, and I can feel proud of it. Now, like most people, my parents are divorced. So I'm thinking with them being in two different places, I'll look around there. So I started off with my dad. Knowing the type of prices around that area that he lives, I thought, hey, why not? I'll give it a shot. Surely there's got to be something near there. It's got a train station nearby, or at least one being built, so it'll be nearby. And even if I have to take a taxi or two to get to and from work, or I just walk there because it's not that far, I'll take a train, and it'll be fine. Nope, I, I just can't. I can't. I don't know why it's so expensive, but I can't. Thinking of moving outside of Kent wasn't an option. Mostly because of the train fare, and you know where that train is going to go. Tumbling down, yes, it's to my work. I was visiting my mother over the Christmas period. We could do that. Thank you, Boris. And while we was up there, I was looking mostly while we were out and just stopping waiting for people to buy things or waiting for someone to pay the parking ticket. I was looking at the local estate agents, see what's around, just as a precaution. Like, if something was to happen, like I somehow managed to get a job transfer up north somewhere, probably Bakewell. I really like Bakewell. You know, things could have happened. But Jesus Christ, when was anyone, anyone, either in part of my family or just anyone online, just say how cheap it was to live up there? I, well, we, we, I should specify we, we went shopping pretty much Every other day. The food there, you could easily buy half the amount you pay down here. So in my mind, food was pretty much covered. Obviously, I'm a big, big chunky boy. So, obviously, I started looking around utilities. They're cheap as fuck. And the houses were even better. So why wasn't anyone going to tell me? I had expressed interest in perhaps moving somewhere cheaper, possibly with somewhere I can claim, and maybe somewhere that fits my criteria. But I couldn't just buy a place up there, cut ties down here, and move. Not only because how was I going to move all of my shit up north, but also I still needed a job. I also had to take into consideration other factors. So if I was to cut ties down here, how often would I be able to see the family that I still have down here if I was moving up north? And how easy would it be to see the family that I have up north if I was up north? So I had to find a particular place. 
But then another thought came to me, also while I was up there, and also as I was surrounded by it. Would I really want to subject myself to that god-awful accent every single day for the rest of my life? No, the answer, the answer is no. So, out of pure annoyance, and a nod from a certain other creator that you might find me in their chat sometime, I started gathering enough. Evidence. evidence and started working on the script this script in fact and if everything goes according to plan yeah it should be coming out around january 15th i can wait for a bubble to pop in the housing market and for houses to be a sensible price again but until then i have a camera my phone i have a laptop which is underneath my phone, and I have my microphone, which is for some reason covered in hair. Okay, so I'm no economist or anything, so take this entire video from here on out with grain of salt the size of one of those Himalayan salt lamps that you can find in pretty much every aunt's house. I always thought that the reason why the south in terms of its economic basis and the north in terms of their economic basis would be because mostly the industrial revolution and that because they were the industrial center for pretty much every part of Britain because of that they would be a little, you know, less cheap, not less cheap, more cheap. We'll go with that. And down here, it would be mostly because of the continentals, you know, Europe, the rest of Europe for America and places that are geologically illiterate, that would be places like France, Germany, Poland, it would be places like Belgium, Spain, Portugal, it would be pretty much anywhere that's not England, or Wales, or Scotland. Anyway, I thought it was because of them, and it was mostly them coming over as tourists or holiday goers, and us Brits being Oh, they're going to get ripped off. You know, we, we took their money, and if it wasn't for the hole in our pockets and uh, some very greedy people up in Westminster, you know, it would make us seem richer than we actually are. But I did hear one theory about why this might be the case. They call it the London Elusive Zone. Basically, it goes like this. With London being the capital, more and more people would want to be there, right? So, naturally, those who can't afford to live in London because it's bought by foreign millionaires and people who generally just want to make a very, very big buck and corporations, they want to move closer to London but not actually be in London, which leads to, well... Uh, maybe selling your organs on the black market just to own a home. I don't know. I'm not that kind of, you know, smart person, but that's what I would do. Probably not my organs, someone else's. So that would equate to why it's so expensive to be either in London or near it. And it would also explain the price drops going further away from London. It would make sense. Because it's the fucking capital. Of course people would want to move to London. But that doesn't explain why places around Birmingham and Cardiff and Edinburgh are all so fucking expensive. I got to this week's sponsor. The Brave Browser is an independent web searching platform that, unlike Google, doesn't log any, say, doesn't log any of your sensitive data. Okay, yeah, I just, I just used Bing, okay? A 
apparently the answer could be population density. Quote, The South has a much bigger economy than the North because there are more people living there, the more people paying better jobs, in other words, and therefore more wealth, therefore everything costs more, including housing, end quote. The source is on screen. Okay, not the most reliant source, but it would make sense when you compare it to this image, which does show a substantial increase in the population density in the south, southeastern area, especially the one place that I loathe most of all, London. With its overpriced transport, its beer that tastes like shit because it's been transported from actual places that can make good beer to the city where it's probably been stored in some dank cellar with rats climbing all over it because it's London and a general cosmopolitan ivory tower-ness. It, it's poor but it's the capital so it's poor and the quality enrichment kind of sense but hey it's not all bad. It's not like they pay almost 800000 for a simple terraced house. To be honest, I give up. Then again, it shows a high increase in all cities when you look at the image. It shows that even in Northern Ireland and the rest of the UK, wherever there is a city, it becomes a nightmare to find any place. Well, no. Yeah. Kinda, it's, it's complicated, okay? If it was just, hear me out, if it was just the case of the big city TM, then why can I find a relatively decent two bed in Birmingham, the second, the second largest city, okay, in England for roughly 140k, when the aforementioned has a similar terrorist house, but goes for nearly six times more. And according to this article from the Financial Times, written in February 2020, quote, the value of properties in the southeast of England is more than the combined, the combined value of properties in Wales, in the Midlands, in Yorkshire, the North, according to a survey done by the property consultancy Savills, which is a fairly respectable property agency here in the UK. The Southeast region, including London, alone accounts for one third of the country's total housing prices, reflecting the huge disparity that exists in homeowners' wealth across the country. This survey tops the chart among the country's total property wealth being valued at 130 billion, with a B. End quote. So, what could it be? What is causing this madness? Is it London? Is it people's greed? Or is it just the market trying to meet demand? Or could it be boomers? Definitively we can't actually be sure. Okay, I lied. But in all fairness, you probably saw it coming. So, of course, the major factor of expense is obviously going to be the population growth that's been occurring over the past 30 to 40 years or so. Not only that, but the, cons the constant construction of new and increasingly soulless new builds is probably not going to help either. Now, this population growth isn't entirely native, but it's it also includes... What the fuck was that? But it also includes overseas arrivals as well. 
you can probably see where I'm going. It's not entirely the sub-major factor either. There are still some other parts, but it should be noted all the same according to the UK Office of National Statistics from the 90s, migration of all kinds, thanks Blair, has been a major factor, and they do point out it is a major factor, on the island with a 0.5% increase from 2018 to 2019, which has been the slowest, in all fairness, since 2004, which doesn't say a lot. Because of this, it takes up positions up and down the country, settling where there is work and obviously where they're most required, as is their right to do so. But it is interesting that most of this migration, also according to the Office of National Statistics, is clustered in the expensive south rather than the uh, paradise-like north where prices can go significantly lower. Turns out that cry of wolf for the left and the uh, Gen Z, yeah, partially correct. Yes, it's boomers. In reference back to that Financial Times article that I spoke about, quote, the survey shows the new wealth has been essentially created by the older generations who have paid off their mortgages and have mostly been seen having their property rise in price. 83% of the nation's housing wealth is owned by owners around the age of above 45, while 40% of the nation's home equity, so what makes the actual price worth anything, is owned by people around and above the age of 65 years, end quote. Sorry if you're over 45, but yeah, the statement remains the same. Anyway, at this point, I had a whole four-page tirade. I'm going to call it what it was. On how unfair to the younger generations, on how batshit insane that the idea of house increase just because of the arbitrary factors like land value or someone owns it now and other dumb shit like that has an effect on the economy or the housing market. I thankfully decided to cut that out, not only for time reasons, but also because most of it was just me repeating myself. However, I did get to, even in my very roundabout way, a fascinating conclusion that I want to leave in, just so I think it could be useful for context of later parts of the video. But cries reach ahead. At the moment, house prices are so expensive, many people will be unable to buy it at all. Which to be honest, impacts birth rates. It encourages people to move abroad or not at all, living with their parents for the rest of their life, having that kind of forever rent situation. It affects the economy, both because people are spending more on rent and less on goods that boost the economy, but also because housing is a precious market and it drastically relies on the GDP to prop up. Its investors are allowed to distort and deflate the market, and it makes the houses themselves more expensive. It's because the market has been allowed to grow unchecked, and for certain landlords, not all of them, but most, to re and Investors, investors are allowed to distort this market as well. To bring housing prices down, some homeowners may have to lose out and end up in negative equity. And it depends on who the politicians 
value most. Homeowners or the opportunities of the later generations? Or should we be able to just sit tight and wait for the bubble to burst? Anywho, uh, another thing that I found out uh, the difference was, if you couldn't tell, was rent. It turns out rent also plays a factor, as more housing estates are being built in the south to compensate for the large portions of homes owned by the older generations. And while the term housing estate also includes buildings from apartment blocks to minor flats to terraced houses, those are the big long brick houses that have no real sound isolation in them, even in nowadays, to the detached houses, which Americans are probably going to find more knowledgeable because pretty much every picture of an American suburb just has detached housing, which I'm kind of jealous of that we don't have more in the UK. In most likelihood, they become another opportunity for those of us in the rental market but not entirely by choice. This is mostly because not many people have their financial capacity to actually own them. As a result, landlords have become the prime subsidiary when it comes to the distribution of said estates. In minor cases, they can dictate the housing prices when it comes to the rental agencies acquiring them. Now, some people may think that the average age of these landlords fall within the 45-ish age category. These people that own the homes but don't properly own them yet. However, in a recent review, over half, technically 59%, of the landlords were aged 55 years or older. And not surprising, given that the older age profile, a third of them, for you know uh, that you know a third is 33% of the landlords in question are retired. As we can see from the before stated quote, this does provide some glimpse into the disparity of distribution of houses, not only within the north-south divide, but also as a means of property ownership. The UK government has also published this review online in the description that I have posted here in the description. But returning to the financial news, pretty much the end of their uh, summary, as it were. In their conclusion, they also came to the vaguely same idea, so it's not exactly new. This being a direct quote from the residential research leader Lucien Cook, who's the one at Savills. When reached for comment, he said that they could also see the problem and replied, quote, the big question for the next decade will be how and if the wealth will be redistributed to the younger generations. Is it little wonder that we are a nation obsessed with the state of housing markets? But it is the distribution of that wealth that is likely to shape both the housing market, the housing formation, and the wider society going forwards." End quote. Not much. Am I going to stop looking despite everything? No. Am I going to move up north for the cheap housing? Also no. The long and short of it goes as follows. What's with the housing disparity between the north and the south of the UK? London 
boomers, the population increasing, landlords, and because I can, the filthy French. In all seriousness, no, I know this is not the direction that I want to go in the future with this channel. I want to try and keep this uh, channel a little on the light side of things. So by the time that I upload this one, I'm probably going to upload another video, which is going to be the outtakes of this video, which I think is going to be a rather interesting little quirk of this channel. I'll post a video and then I'll post the outtakes. It's mostly going to be like this, just me rambling on and on and on. And the occasional slip up or neighbour noise or whatever. But yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, like, sub, share, please. It would be great. I, I really do need to get an outro, but yeah. See you later.